Greetings and hellos to the Bitwig community and beyond. In this video, we'll be taking a look at recording audio from the outside world into the Bitwig studio. Probably the single most consistent feature that exists amongst all digital audio workstations is the ability to record audio. And recording audio in Bitwig is very fast and very easy. And once we've captured some, it's very easy to manipulate and process inside the system. And with all that Bitwig can do inside the box, it's sometimes easy to forget that it's actually a full-blown multi-track audio recording system as well. So let's take a look at how all of this works. The first place that we're going to want to go is to the dashboard to set up our audio interface. So when we go to the dashboard, we go to settings, and then over on the left, we can go to audio. And this is where we can see the audio interface that we're using. And one of the cool things about the Bitwig Studio is the fact that we can have a different input device from output device. In my studio, I use an Apogee Duet, and it features two inputs that can either be a stereo pair or independent mono. And this is perfect for most use cases that I have. However, I do have some hardware that I use from time to time. And the Duet simply doesn't accommodate all of the inputs. So I also am in possession of a Zoom UAC8, which features eight inputs on it. And I can use this as the input device when I'm going back to record some of that hardware. Below that is my sample rate. And this is basically my resolution. The 44,100 hertz equates to snapshots per second. And I can set it higher, but for all of our purposes today, 44,100 is going to be more than adequate. Below this is our block size, and this is probably one of the most important things to be aware of for when we're recording digital audio. And we can think of this as our buffer setting. And the idea with this is, is that as we lower the samples or block size, we get a lower latency. And this is ideal for capturing and recording. However, it comes at a price where we use more processor power. So this is something that we might want to adjust or might need to adjust as we incorporate more tracks into our project. So I'm going to leave my setting at 128 samples. This is going to be more than suitable for what we need to do today. Below that are my input buses. And this is where I can specify what the input buses are going to show up, like in the input output section on the tracks inside the Bitwig Studio. And I can also rename them. So if I'm not happy with mono one in or mono two in, I could simply go ahead and change it to something else. But we're going to leave it as mono in one and mono in two. And that's pretty much all I need to have set up here. So I'm going to close my dashboard. And now we're back into my project and I already have a drum beat ready to go. And I also have an audio track that's set up to capture my guitar. I've placed effects on it so we can hear the sound processed as I record. And if we take a look over at the inspector on the left hand side, we can see my input output for the track. And by default, it's set to stereo input. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to mono in two. And if I hit the arm button, the guitar will come through when I start strumming on it. But one thing I want to do first is I want to go to the play menu, and this is where I can set up my pre-roll or count off. And I generally like to have two bar count off. So let's go ahead and track the guitar in against the drum beat. So as you can see, it's very, very easy to record audio into the Bitwig Studio. And like I said, once we have audio captured, we can do a ton of manipulation. Now I can obviously go through a ton of different audio editing functions on the recorded guitar part here, but some very surface level fast things that I can do on the fly is I can select the clip and then go to my clip menu and slice the recorded audio to a drum machine. And what I'm going to do is set the resolution to split it at bars. So it's going to make it into four even slices. And I'm going to say, okay. And now I have just sliced it to a new drum machine. 
and I can trigger each of the slices from my keyboard. So I could reorder and I could resequence the recorded material. But for the moment, we're going to get rid of that because I like the way that the audio is recorded. So I can also record into the clip slots in the clip launcher. And I'm going to go ahead and make a new audio track. And I'm going to record something out of context here. What I want to do is I just want to capture some audio from the microphone. So I'm going to go ahead and set my input on this to be the microphone input of my voice right now. And I'm gonna arm this to record. And now we see the signal coming in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the record button in the clip slot and just capture a little bit of audio. Ah. Uh, okay. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to create a new track. And on this track, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a sampler. And I'm going to then take the recorded material and drop it into the sampler. And once I have audio cap recorded and put into the sampler, I can do a ton of different things when it's in here. And we're only going to touch a little bit of the surface here, but once it's in the sampler, I can strike the keys and it triggers the sample. And I can hit this button here and it keyboard tracks it so it's going to play properly up and down the keyboard. And I can also loop it. So let's put it into a forward loop. And I'm going to go ahead and loop the tail end of it and crossfade it. And one of the coolest things that I can do to it, which is actually one of my favorites, is that I can detect the root key. So what it's going to do is it's going to analyze what the frequency is of that audio and it's going to then retune it so that when I play on the keyboard, the keyboard pitch is accurately represented to the key that I strike. So if I strike C now, so let's just do a quick little shaping to the envelope. Let's put a little bit of decay and a little bit of release, no sustain. So it's more like a pluck. Add a little bit more release. And maybe what we'll do is we'll spruce it up with a reverb. And let's just pull up a quick preset for this. and maybe even follow it with a delay. And let's hide the clip launcher. And now what I can do is I can record this as a MIDI clip and create a melody line out of this recorded audio on top of what I've already recorded here with the guitar. So let's just do a quick pass with this. So as you can see, recording audio into the Bitwig Studio is fast and easy. And the real fun begins once we capture something because we have these amazing tools on board inside the Bitwig Studio to alter and manipulate and twist our recordings around. So hopefully this has been mildly entertaining and given you some good food for thought. 
And until next time, stay creative.